Good morning. It's Monday, January 13th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, From Jacob to Israel, and our scriptures, Genesis chapter 35. Eventually, Jacob and his household arrived at Luz, also called Bethel in Canaan. Jacob built an altar there and named the place El Bethel, which means God of Bethel, because God had appeared to him there when he was fleeing from his brother Esau. Soon after this, Rebekah's old nurse Deborah died. She was buried beneath the oak tree in the valley below Bethel. Ever since, the tree has been called Alan Bakuth, which means Oak of Weeping. Now that Jacob had returned from Paddan Aram, God appeared to him again at Bethel. God blessed him, saying, Your name is Jacob, but you will not be called Jacob any longer. From now on, your name will be Israel. So God renamed him Israel. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet, is a line from William Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, in which Romeo Montague and Juliet Capulet meet and fall in love in Shakespeare's lyrical tale of star-crossed lovers. They're doomed from the start as members of two warring families. Juliet tells Romeo that a name is an artificial and meaningless convention, and that she loves the person who is called Montague, not the Montague name and not the Montague family. Romeo, out of his passion for Juliet, rejects his family name and vows, as Juliet asks, to deny his father and instead be new baptized as Juliet's lover. This one short line encapsulates the central struggle and tragedy of the play and is one of Shakespeare's most famous quotes. In the case of Jacob, to Shakespeare's tragedy, we could add mutiny as that describes the casting aside of one's given name and family. However, the two sagas end so differently. Romeo and Juliet commit suicide and are lost. Jacob, on the other hand, is accosted by God and responds well. In the end, he's elevated to Israel. The name change is more than a sweet-smelling temporary rose. It's a proof and continuation of God's promises and love. The name Jacob means heel-grabber or deceiver. It goes back to the point of Jacob's birth when, as a second-born twin, he's seen exiting the womb, grabbing his brother's heel, a prophecy of his greedy, deceiving ways, which plays out bigger than Shakespeare ever dreamed. It divides the family and seemingly destroys the future God had promised. But in the middle chapters of Genesis, we see God working in Jacob's life to bring him back into the fold. From manipulator to integrity bound and driven, the heel grabber becomes the one who bows in the direction of God's will and humble confession to the father and brother he deceived. He who once tried to supplant now worships. Jacob the deceiver has become Israel, the right hand of God's strength. For you today. In a culture where deception and untruth are the norm from media to the halls of Congress and in everyday life, God could use a few more Jacobs that he could rename Israel. Truth be told, it's a simple process. Trust in God and tell the truth, no matter who's listening. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.